So lesson one, continuing again. Area and perimeter of a triangle, which would help us with problem 24. How do you calculate the area of a triangle? Basically, what's the formula again? Yep, one half base times height, or some people like to do base times height divided by two. And what does this tell us? What? What does it mean by area, basically? What is area again? Not sure. No, that was Michaela. Um, <laughs> what does the area tell us? What does area tell us? How much? How much t space it takes up, right? So, the space. the figure takes up. So how much flat space, right? It's not 3D space. Okay. Perimeter is the blank of the shape. Where is the perimeter? Where do we find perimeter? Of any object. Outside. That makes sense, right? We're going around a triangle, around a square, rectangle, the sorts. The cinnamon, 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 for height is what? Altitude. Altitude. Don't get mixed up with attitude. Actually, we got a little bit more. This is, okay, we got several things to go through. So this is the altitude. Altitude's a fancy word for height, okay? We talked about that in our example. So going to problem, or number four there, kind of goes to exactly what your problem was in your homework. Equilateral triangle, perimeter of 24, area of 16 times the square root of 3. Find the altitude, ooh, of the triangle this time. So now you have an area, and you have a perimeter. Can you find how tall it is? Given the example we just did on the board with problem 24, by finding the area, I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes here. Figure this out on your own. And we're going to come together. So as you guys are finishing up, I'm going to draw the triangle, which everybody should already have. Boom, boom, boom. It tells us that the... Perimeter is 24, and the area is 16 square root 3. Okay, I know I'm just rewriting the information that we already know, but if the perimeter is 24 and all three sides are the same, each side is what? 8. The most important one out of all of that is just the base, right? So now we know the base. We also know the area. The question is, I'm going to use this fun looking color. You can't see that too well on there. But that is to help us find the h or the height. So what do I do? What do I want to do to solve for that? Adam? Solve for H. I really like what Adam just did, though. Adam said, I wrote down A equals 1 half base times height. He wrote down the formula that he's going to use. At that point, he's going to play coach. I call it playing coach because what do coaches do? They substitute players in. Do we know the A or the area? Yes, we know it to be 16 square root of 3, correct? We know what one half is. One half is one half. Do we know the base? The base we said was, and we do not know what h is, so I'll leave h alone. And now I just have to solve for h. Maybe to solve for h, though, I am going to multiply half times eight, and half times eight is 
4. So I get 4h. And to solve, the last step is divide by 4. So this is really not that bad of a problem. So h is equal to? 4 square root 3. Um, and we are in meters, so it's meters. Notice that I did not take my calculator out. Figure out the square root of 3, which is 1.73, and multiply it by 4. So it's not 7 something or really close between around 7 or the round 7 with some decimals. I don't want decimals. We had square root of 3 in the problem. Let's leave it in terms of square root of 3. Just like when we have problems with pi, we're going to leave it in terms of pi. Unless it asks us to go to two decimal places or one decimal place. So therefore, the height of this triangle is 4 times square root of 3 pi. It says a blank is a line that cuts or intersects one or more lines in the same plane. So if you had your books open to 1F, you would find something in there that would fit that mold. What would it be? It's probably one of the words up above. Transversal. So a transversal is anything that cuts another line in the same plane or intersects. Okay. I think this is definitely highlighting the fact that if you had the handout, it would save you 10 times more time. If the blank cuts through parallel lines, blank and blank angles are formed. Whoa. So, wait, what are we cutting? What is the word for that thing that cuts? The transversals. So, okay, so it's the transversals again. So, if the transversal cuts through parallel lines, hence the picture below, we got two parallel lines, line one and line two, cut by transversal T, they're calling it. It's forming two different types of angles. Okay, so I'm going to draw on that picture below to kind of highlight here. So we got our parallel lines, lines one and line two, cut by T, okay? It forms two different types of angles. It forms the ones that are, they look like they're inside, and then there's ones that are on the outside. And if you're on the inside of something, there's a fancy word to be on the inside, or a fancy wor word for inside is interior. So either they're interior or you're on the outside, so you'd be called exterior. So you have interior angles and exterior angles. I'm going to erase all of those extra lines on there. So we have interior and exterior angles are formed. So on three, we go back to that diagram with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 on the angles. What kind of conjectures or things can we say about those angles? What do you guys want to say? Let's all, what, you know, take a side that, you know, we can't assume things right now, but what do you want to assume by looking at that? Look at angle one and angle three. Wait a minute. You know something about angle one and angle three. They're the same. Why? We had the term already. Yeah, Ashen. Um, I was just going to say. Say again? I was going to say something. Oh, you're going to say something else. But why is one and three the same? Would it also, could we say two and four? Yeah. Why? One and three. Two and four, five, seven, six and eight. Elijah. Uh, they're opposite, right? They're opposite? They're they are congruent because they are? Oh, straight up and down. Vertical. 
They're vertical angles. So we have vertical angles, and vertical angles are across from each other, and they are congruent. So we know that 1 and 3 are the same. We know 2 and 4, 5 and 7, 6 and 8 are all the same. Okay, what else are we saying? Yeah? Why are you saying 1, 3, and 5, 7 are the same? Wait a minute. We already know 1 and 3 and 5 and 7 are the same. So are you making the connection to say 3 and 5 are the same? Why? Right. Our two parallel lines are cut by the, uh, some line that doesn't change in its, um, as it goes through. So, yes, the angle of 7 and 3, so angle 7, that's bad, angle 7 is congruent to angle 3. So these two angles here are the same. Don't they look like they're the same? Like if I picked one up and dropped it on the other? Does everybody happen to know what the name of that is? It's in, up in the description as well. Corresponding. It's corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are the ones that look exactly the same on the same side of the transversal. So, 7 and 3 are corresponding angles. 2 and 6 are corresponding angles. Because, again, I can take 2, pick it up, drag her down, drop it. Same. On the other side, what would be a, a corresponding angle pair? What's a corresponding angle pair on the other side? One and five. And? Four and eight. Those are corresponding angles. Hmm. But why the same then for 3 and 5 or even 4 and 6 they are the same okay I'm going to take off all this writing on here okay if we take a look and we agree that 2 and 6 are the same I mean, agree that 1 and 5 are the same. Can we say that? Basically, the corresponding angles. 1 plus 2 adds up to what? 180. 2 and 3 add up to? 180. 3 and 4 add up to? 1 and 4 add up to? Same thing with 5, 6, 7, and 8. Yes? You guys can see that they're all formed straight angles. Therefore, we that's why another reason using that whole prop, uh, the whole thing with vertical angles and such, that those are the same. If we said 2 and 6 are the same, and we said 1 and 5 are the same, well, then 5 and 3 have to be the same because they're the same as 1, or, sorry, sorry 4 and 6 have to be the same because they're the same as 6 and 4. All right, hold on, 6 and 2. In a way. They're the opposites. They're, they're the supplements. They add up to the 180s. Because 2 and 6 are the same, 1 and 5 are the same, but 1 and 3 are the same, so 5 and 3 are the same. I don't know if you follow that. They look the same as well. They're both obtuse angles. To make it easier, think of that zigzag line that I wrote in the very beginning. One, three, five, and seven. If you can draw the zigzag line through parallel lines, they're all the same. I'll change it to blue, and two, four, six, and eight are also the same. As you follow down, they're the same. Now to answer four, after kind of getting all of that information, it says, for example, angle three and angle six are called 
interior angles, right? They're called interior angles Interior angles, I think I've got the I and the O there. They're interior angles, whereas angles three and five are what? They're also interior, aren't they? So, but it's got two spaces on there. Why? Second word is interior. Three and five, they're interior ang angles. But they're on the opposite sides of the transversal. Does anybody know? We don't use opposite. We use alternate interior angles. And if we call five, three and five alternate interior, what do you think we call two and eight? Two is way out here. Eight's way out there. They're also alternate, right? They alternate between one side or the other. So that's still alternate. But it's not interior. It's exterior. So we have things that are interior angles. We have exterior angles. We have alternate interior angles. We have alternate exterior angles. We have corresponding angles. And those are all the same to each other. So alternate interior angles are the same. Alternate exterior are the same. Corresponding angles are the same. Same, 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 same. Congruent. I think we just did four, right? So it's just the example now. Given that the angle six is 55 degrees and the two lines are parallel, can you label them all? Can you tell me what 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 are? So, on the diagram, you're going to fill in what right away? Number 6. Number 6 is 55. Okay. Now you fill them in. If you can fill in all the places, I'm okay with this. You don't need to list them as one, angle one is this, angle two is that. If you fill in the, the diagram, I'll be okay. What's a really easy one to fill in? What angle? Seven. Seven. Why? Same angle because they are? Yeah. Vertical angles. Those are the easy ones. Now, wait a minute. Six and three are what again? They're interior, but they're alternate interior angles, and alternate interior angles are the. So that is also 55. But if 3 is 55, then so is 2. And what do we know about 1, 4, 5, and 8? They are going to be all the same whether it's vertical angles, alternate interior, alternate exterior. Look at 7 and 2. They're both 55s. They're alternate exterior angles. What is angle 1? How do I find angle 1? 180 minus 55. 180 minus 55 is? 125. I'm going to use a different color. I'll use red. 125. That means 4 is 125. Alternate interior to 4 is angle 5, which is 125, and vertical angle, boom, we just filled it all in. Zig, zig, pattern. If you remember that, it'll help you out 10 times more than anything else. Any questions? Okay. What am I going to want to do here? To find an angle, I actually need to know what is. I need to know what. I need to know what x is. 
As soon as I know what x is, I can do multiply it by 4 and add 10, and I'll have that angle up top. I can do the same thing for 8x minus 25, right? What's x? Is it 2? Is it 25? Is it 100? How am I going to find that? What do we know about those two angles, though? Why? They are the same. What's the name for those? They're not alternate interior. They're not alternate exterior. They're not vertical angles. But corresponding, yes. They're corresponding angles. And corresponding angles are congruent. So I can set their angle measures to be the same. Hence, I did that. So when I solve it, I'm going to bring the 4x to the other side. So I subtract it from both sides. And I'm going to add 25, correct? Gone, gone. 10 plus 25 is 35. And x is, or not x is, but uh, becomes 4x. Divide both sides by 4. I get x equals 35 over 4. That doesn't look fun at all. Is that the answer? No. We've got to answer the question. It says find the angle measures. How many different angle measures are there? Is it eight of them? There are eight angles, but how many different measures? Two. So is these guys, remember, 4x plus 10 and 8x minus 25 are actually the same thing. And then I just say to find its supplement, so then I'll know both of them. I'll know all of them. So I need to put it back into one of those equations. Which one looks smaller? The first one. 4 times 35 over 4 plus 10. Well, that makes it a lot easier, doesn't it? No more fractions. Why? What's going to happen? The 4 is canceled, and then you get 35 plus 10. And what's 35 plus 10? So it's a 45 degree angle. That's one of them. What's the other one then? 135, because it's 180 minus 45. You've now found all of the angle measures. It's only two. Not so bad, right? What's the area of a triangle? Again, we just did it. One half base times height. Does anybody happen to know the area of a circle? It's pi r squared. Pi times the radius squared. Um, what does area mean again? It means how much what? Space on the surface, right? How much surface there is. How much surface there is on a flat plane. Ooh, next one. I know I'm moving fast here because I just have to fill in the blanks. How do I find the perimeter of a circle? Wait, perimeter in a circle. Ooh, that one's probably a little bit tougher. What's the formula for that? What's a fancy word for that? A fancy word for that is? Sir, circumference. circumference, thank you. Circumference, so maybe we don't know the formula, but what does perimeter mean? Perimeter again is the distance where? A round circle. That's a bad around. Oh, that was bad, isn't it? Huh. Circle. Distance around circle. How do we find it again? What is circumference? What's the circumference formula? It's in your planner. All of these formulas are in your planner. But 
What is it? it? Has pi in it. it? Has r in it. But it's not pi r squared, it's 2 pi r. Two pi r. Circumference is two pi r. A sector of a circle looks like below. What is a sector? So we can got this thing here, that picture, that red part. That's called a sector. It's a part of the area of a circle. So maybe part of an area of a circle. It's part of the area, okay? So the sector is part of an area. It takes up a certain percentage of a circle. Okay, that's all I'm going to say for now. If you look at question 5 there, or point 5, it says angle C is approximately how much of that circle? How many degrees do you think that is? It's turned sideways on your page. Turn your page, if you, or turn your head a little bit. Doesn't that look like what kind of angle? A right angle? 90? So I would say it looks like this particular problem. Now again, we're assuming, what shouldn't we do? Assume. But if we assume that's 90 degrees, what are your ideas for finding the area, then, of that sector? It's 90 degrees. 90 degrees, or, maybe if I don't look at it as degrees, how much of that circle looks like it's red? Twenty-five percent? A quarter? If I was in, say, a different class, Back earlier in the day, earlier in your career, third, fourth grade, you guys would have broke it up into similar pieces and said, hey, I got one out of four shaded. That's 25%. If I'm only using 25% of the circle, how much of the area am I using? 25%. So what are your ideas on finding the area of just that little piece? Divide it by 4 or multiply it by 25% or multiply it by 1 fourth or 1 quarter. Okay? All of those are per perfectly good viable options. So what are your ideas for finding? I would say this. I would multiply the percent used. Now I'm doing this because... This not only applies to sectors, it also can apply to arcs. Percent used times total area. Hopefully that would be enough. If you, if you need to put more into that, do it. Homework, page 12, 21 through 23, 26 through 28.